Shalom, brothers, all praises to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. That is the name of the Most High and His Son of the Bible. In the pure Hebrew tongue, that is your proper, proper names, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, the Most High and His Son. Dub honesty, apostles of Great Millstone, whom have taught us this word. Shalom to the elect out there <clears throat> and also to the sisters that watch us. This is your brother, Priest Ayathan, and this is another podcast type format. The main thing I want to get into today is just going into how us, the teachers, the prophets are a spectacle unto this world. You know, we don't realize how much power we have in this lowest state that we're in, how much power we have, and how much of a spectacle that we are unto this world. You know, so I want to go into that and maybe a little bit of a spiritual ramble because, you know, woke up this morning mad as hell that I'm waking up in this kingdom and every man, every Israelite man in the right state of mind should feel this way. You know, if you woke up feeling like, like this, okay, if you woke up feeling like this, like Ice Cube today was a good day, then, then something is wrong with you. Something is wrong with you. Um, the scriptures say, was at Ecclesiastes 7 and 7, oppression maketh the wise man angry or oppression maketh a wise man mad so if you're wise if you have any type of sense and you're an israelite so-called black man so-called puerto rican man so-called uh north american indian a seminal indian so-called haitian here in america you should be pissed off if you're not pissed off if you're waking up and you're singing this song today was a good day then something is wrong with you you know Something is wrong with you because in this here in America, we are being a pre so called minorities, the 12 tribes of Israel are being oppressed. And every year that goes by, more and more measures are being passed to oppress you more and more. So if you're being oppressed, but you don't realize you're being oppressed, then you need a checkup. You know, you need a mental checkup. And our people, the 12 tribes of Israel, the so-called minorities here in America, need a checkup because most of them are waking up, you know, because they got a job, because they actually have a plantation to go to, to go and pick cotton that day, you know, they, uh, they think it's a good day, you know, they go plant, pick some cotton, and they're supposed to get such and such amount of money, but by the time they do get paid, a week later, two weeks later, whenever it is, and after all the taxes and everything, they get a little bit to take home, and they think they um on top of the world. So that's a sick, that's a sick individual, mentally and spiritually sick. So we here at Great Millstone, or the men out there that are awake, spiritually awake. With the spirit of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, understand that we are being oppressed, and therefore, yes, we are angry. And the more we learn, the angry, angrier you become. Pursuing again to the scriptures, okay, a man that increaseth in knowledge increaseth in, in, in sorrow, and I believe that's Ecclesiastes one and eighteen. All right. <coughs> So the main thing I want to go into is this here, spectacle, all right? Now the scriptures speak about this. Matter of fact, let's go to the scripture. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9. It says, For I think that the Most High, Yahweh, hath set forth us, the apostles, last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. Now let's look at the word spectacle. Spectacle here from the 
etymology, etymonline.com. Spectacle means from the mid 1400s, circa, specially prepared or arranged <laughs> display. So, yeah, specially prepared or arranged display, which is that's heavy, right? That's heavy because it's like um, when you go to the mall, when you go to the mall, or even if you go online, let's say you're online shopping, you go to the mall shopping, any store, you have the display glass. And the display glass, you put your most featured products on a display glass. You know, whether it's mannequin with clothes on or even just items and you arrange them perfectly, you arrange them in a way to attract attention. And from the from this spectacle or from this um these items, these display items behind a display glass, depending on what's being presented or how well it's arranged, it you're gonna walk in, you know, because they uh they attract a certain niche, you know, a certain type of people. So the way that uh, items are displayed and the type of items you put in that display glass, it's meant to attract a certain niche or a certain kind of people. When they see it, they're like, oh, you know what? That looks good. That looks, that's hot right there. Let me, let me walk in and see what it's about. So the Most High has a specially prepared or arranged out there on the street corners from the way we dress to the way we speak. You know, because what we are and the, and the reason why we're also known the, the nation of Israel is known as, as Mount Zion, because Zion, Zion means a monument. We're like a monument to the most high. So we're out there to accurately represent the most high, to accurately represent um, the kingdom of heaven, Yahweh Shai and the kingdom of heaven, you see, by our words. In our actions, the way we conduct ourselves out there, whether it's online or actually on a street corner, you see? So we are made a spectacle unto this world, you know? It says a specially prepared or arranged display from old French spectacle, sight, spectacle, Roman games, 13th century, from Latin spectaculum. A public show spectacle place from which shows are seen. You see? So that's why the Most High has got us in every... We're in every major city on the highways and byways. And now the Israelites are something to see. When you go to New York, you're going to see the Israelites. You know, that's why you see people come by to take pictures and all that. Because we're like a... Uh, we're like a, 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 a landmark in these different, these different um, cities. You know, we're a spectacle, we're a show, if you if uh, if you will. We're basically like a trailer to the kingdom of heaven or a trailer to the coming of Yahweh Shai. We got the nuclear missile signs up. We got the RFID microchip sign up. We're speaking about it, prophesying about it. So we're like a trailer to what's coming soon, to the prophecies are about to pass. That's the best way to put it. We're like a trailer to the to an upcoming movie, World War III. Okay, and also to the kingdom of heaven. We're a trailer of things to come, you know, but the most high is attracting a certain type of men, you see, and the most high is using us to show his power. And this is what I really wanted to get into. Now, let me read the scripture again. First Corinthians four and nine, for I think that the most high Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, hath set forth us the apostles last at it, as it were appointed to death for we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men we are made a spectacle or show unto the world and to angels and to men now this is what's so powerful about the position that the most high got us in you know and you got to really really you got to really think about this now here it is we're a bunch of Israelites, so-called, we're a bunch of niggas and spicks and wetbacks as they look at us. This is what they see when they see us on the corner. They just see niggas and Puerto Ricans and Mexicans and Indians, you know, standing on the corner with a bunch of signs and 
And as far as us, ragtag garments that they like to call it, or dirty garments or bum garments, whatever you want to call it. But this is what's so powerful about that. Number one, we're out there to display the most highest power. So we're taking away the focus from us or the, how should I say it? We're the, the glory and the credit. We're taking away the credit from ourselves and we're focusing it on the scriptures, right? So we don't go out there. When we go out there and speak, um, what's so powerful is not the clothes that we're wearing because we're wearing some brand new attractive garments with colors that catch the eye and all that. Nah, okay? What's so powerful about us is that they walk down the street and they see a bunch of niggas <laughs> and spicks and Puerto Ricans and they range from very young brothers in their teens, high school or just graduated high school or mid-20s and older brothers and they out there and they're breaking down the scriptures like never have heard before. Because here in America, Christianity, so-called Christianity, the Bible, you know, that's taught to be the white man's book. This is what you're raised to believe. I was raised to believe that. It's a white man's book. You know, the white Caesar Borgia, the white Jesus, um, all the Catholic, Catholic priests and all that were all white. Christianity, you know, the pilgrims that came over here, they were Christians and they 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 did a good thing by forcing Christianity um, because that's, you know, it's the scriptures and all the disciples were Edomites and um, all the prophets were Edomites. So here it is. They see a bunch of a bunch of Jakes and so-called minorities, young brothers on a corner and they dissecting the scriptures like like they're swinging nunchucks and they never seen this or would never fathom or imagine this before in their life. And these are scholars, so-called Jews, all right, Eat people of different walks of life or different um, levels of education have graduated college, got PhDs and master's degrees. And here it is. They see a young brother, 16, 17, 18, early 20s, and he's out there cutting people with the scriptures. I mean, who, do, who the hell, who does that? Who takes the scriptures and makes mother effers want to cry when they leave? I mean, that's unheard of. That's powerful right there. That's power. And to see a, young, a bunch of young Jakes and young, um, you know, young Gadites and young uh, Ephraimites, you know, uh, um, uh, Manassites, all them 12 tribes out there kicking the scriptures, and you got these Edomites and these priests, you know, <clears throat> that have been going to, that, have, that are scholars and have degrees in Christianity and this and that, and here it is, they coming up to you, and you're going to the book of Genesis, you're going into the book of Romans, you're going to Corinthians, and you're going, you're calling precepts, you know, other brothers, they already got the, you, you calling the precept, oh, I already got it. You know, brothers got five or six brothers got precepts lined up back to back, you know, and they all, you don't even have to call out the scriptures. They're all lined. They all perfectly lock into each other like a piece of a puzzle. They all lock into each other and it's like an orchestra, you know, and, and brothers just in tune in the spirit. Yeah, how about Shimi, how shy? And, yo, bro, I got a scripture. I got a scripture. I got a scripture. And everything is just like boom, boom, boom. You know, it's like you're hitting these dudes with combos but using the scriptures and people's feelings again hurt, you know, like um, Hebrews 4 and 12. The word is like a two edged sword cutting asunder the soul and, the, you know, in other words, you cutting people's conscience when they leave. They're never they're not the same no more. You know, they walk, they walk away and then they got to come back. They come back. They got to they got to go home. They got to study. They got to come, come back two late two weeks later. Then you cutting them again. So this is it's powerful, bro. Brothers, it's powerful for them to see a bunch of Jakes. And this is why the elites pursuant to uh, the book of Revelation, the 11th chapter. This is why they're so afraid, man. You know, the elites worst and the elites worst enemy is the truth. You know, that's the worst enemy. That's the truth. 
the reason why they spend so much money, Esau, they spend so much money on um, advertising and different these different programs to deceive people is because they're trying to hide the truth. You see, they're trying to hide the truth from them. So Esau spends most of his money deceiving people, keeping them away from the truth. That's the most harmful thing to Esau is is um the truth coming out. But the truth is like trying to hold a um a ball underwater, you know? You can hold it, hold it, hold it, but the ball is always fighting to pop back up to the surface and eventually you're going to lose your grip and that shit's going to shoot out the water. And and that's the, what's shooting out the water is the nation of Israel, us waking up, you see? That's why in the book of Revelation, it said when they stood upon their feet, great fear fell upon them because they spending all this money to hide the truth, okay? But they can't do it. It's coming out no matter what they do. You see? So, yeah, the, the whole point of this, um, this lesson is just, I just want you, you know, I just want you brothers to really think about it how much of an impact and how much power, you know, we don't realize. We think we're just nobodies. You sit down and think about it, you know, we don't realize how much power we have when we go out there and, and do what we do. And not, man, not anybody could do this. Let me go to, um, let me see, was it one in five? I believe. Yeah, let me read Jeremiah 1 and 4 and 5, and I'll probably stop here. Jeremiah 1 and 4, then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in a belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Right? Let me read down. Verse 6, Then said I, Ah, Lord, power, behold, I cannot speak for I am a child. And this is what they see when they go out there. They see, <laughs> they look at us like children, okay? Because most of us are young, some brothers are older. And also the way we're the way we dress, all of us got jobs, we all got vehicles, okay? Um, it's not cheap to go out for it's not cheap, especially for brothers out of state, to go out there and speak, you know? You need you need money. You need money for gas, you need money for transportation, you need money to to um to get back home, you need money to buy food and all that, you need money to make the signs, you need money to buy the equipment, you need money to upload shows. So all the brothers work. We all got jobs, brothers are driving, doing this and that. But when they see us, okay, when they see us on the corner, because you know, we it's not all about being flashy and all that. When Yahweh Shai came on the earth, he wasn't flashy. Yahweh Shai's family had money. You tell, the scriptures tell you he came from a wealthy family. They were carpenters. A good trade. But he didn't walk around flashing the garments. Matter of fact, he told you to watch out. Watch out for men dressed in fine linen and, and fine garments. He told you to be careful of them. So when you see somebody talking about the scriptures and they dressed to the T, looking sharp, then you can't trust that man because they're trying to focus the attention on the materialistic aspects instead of the spiritual aspect, you know? So our thing is staying in the scriptures, staying in the scriptures, staying in the scriptures. Talk about the prophecies. It ain't about us. It's about the Most High. And the way the Most High is showing his power is cutting everybody up by these dudes on the corner that don't look like they graduated school, as they say, okay? Look like they don't work, as they say. So that's the power of it. So when we go out there, our focus is the word of the Most High, the prophecies. Our focus is giving the glory to the Most High, okay? Um, verse 6, Then said I, Ah, Lord, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Okay, so like I said, that's what they see. They see us as children on the corner age-wise and also as a children meaning nobody's in this world 
You know, a bunch of broke niggas with dirty garments in the corner. What the hell do they know? Okay, but when they come up and try to test, it's a whole different story. Because what they don't understand is that they going up against Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. They going against his scriptures. You see? <laughs> so verse 7. For the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. So when we go out there, we go in the spirit. We go in the spirit. You know? And you brothers know, you brothers that are out there doing the work, you know what I'm talking about, that feeling. When you get out there, when you feel like you're invincible because the spirit of the Lord is on you, you feel like you're invincible. Okay? It says, verse 8, Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, said the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Verse 10. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. So our whole purpose out there is to spiritually tear down this kingdom, to spiritually tear it down, to spiritually tear down all other philosophies, all other methods of thought, all other philosophies that are outside of the scriptures, that are profane, outside of the temple. Anything outside of these scriptures is profane. And it says to throw down. So when we're going out there, we're spiritually throwing this place down because what we're in the middle of right now, brothers, we're in the middle of a spiritual battle. You know, we're in the middle of a spiritual battle. Esau right now, hasn't he hasn't brought forth the martial law troops and all that. And you know what? That's the easiest part of his job is to bring forth the martial law troops and to come against the elect and to come against the world, America, these J's, the two-thirds and the one-thirds, to come at us physically, that's the easy part for him. But the hard part and what he's been struggling for for centuries is the spiritual aspect of the warfare, okay? And he's... And he's, he's um, He's at a, a speed a speed bump right now because of the prophets. Because of the prophets. So we're slowing down his uh his